Yes, we do. We post it. Yeah. Bars, right? Oh, I know. I was having fun. Hey, look, Slim, I'm over with him. Hey. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi out there. How are you? Lady Mo at Beast the Beast from South Beast, the gutter godmother, DC rap. And hip And hip hop. Yeah. So. <clears throat> This is my first YouTube live Mohan report. And I welcome all who tune in. Now let's get right on to it. So today, we're going to go on and continue with Know Your Hood, Rep Your Plantation. Let's see, we've done about three or four of these now. And it's been a while. It's been like a year since we've done them. And I think that we needed to go back, way back to like the 1600s because names change places stay the same but the names of the places change and a lot of people through the decades and centuries don't even realize where they're standing because no one actually really told them where they were or who they were and then you have a lot of bloodshed and bickering over a bunch of bullshit over some street names that don't even exist for real, except on paper. Sign. And a placard sign. <laughs> All over your newly paved street. So, I don't even know where to begin. The first thing I want to say is. The first thing I want to say is to the people who dwell upon the land in what is present day District of Columbia, Maryland, and Virginia. Do you know where you live and do you know what it was prior to you? Being upon the ground. That is the first question. Like, do you know, I, I hear a lot of people bickering. We got this whole DMV thing going on. I wanted to start at home first. Before I spread across this turtle island, I, I have to start right here because this is where my feet are. So, do you know what the land was prior to it was 501, Bray Farms, Lincoln Heights, Langston Terrace, Congress Park, uh, and anything else, that, any other street name that you can, I know I named some Southeast streets, but any street name that you could think of in the vicinity of the metropolitan area, per se, do you know what it was called? Well, let's start this off real quick. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> you ready? Everybody always screaming DMV, but people don't know what the DMV is. I'm going to make this a part of this Know Your Hood, Rep Your Plantation segment today. We always hear people scream DMV, and we assume that DMV stands for D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. The DMV does not stand for D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. It stands for... The Delmarva, 
the Delaware, Maryland, and Virginia Peninsula. When someone came up to me and asked me, oh, you from the DMV? You from Delaware? And I was like, what the hell are you talking about? And laughed their ass out like they was wrong as shit until I had to come home and do some research and find out that the D is not for D.C. It's for the Delaware, Maryland, Virginia Peninsula, the Delmarva. <laughs> okay, now we're going to take it back even a little further. Because I see a lot of people getting upset about these titles and these names. When it's cool that you want to rep where you from, but you don't know where you from. You just know that's what they call it now. Okay? So, if you really want to rep the land, you must know where on the land you stand. And that is where I come in today. (laughs) So, today we are going to talk about... A couple of places that you all know, you might be familiar with, you might call it something other than what it is, okay? Um, Yeah. Let's go to uh, this first. Can you pull up a first picture? Let's pull up a map. Yeah, I want to pull up a map. That one. No, let's go. Let's go back a little. No, that's you. You, you think that's too far back? You think that's too far back? Let's say. Uh, okay. Do you see where it says Nakastock? N a c o t h t a n k. See that right there, Nakastock. I know it looks like. Nakach Tank. The word is Nakastank. Put an A in the beginning of that. Dr- yeah, yeah, yeah. Drop that C, that T C H. And that S. Anacostia. They, dr- you know, they could not pronounce our words when they came over here. So Nakastank. To a space. It's, it, Too many consonants. Okay. So they added A's upon the rivers which they rode on. A-N-A-C-O-S-T-I-A, Anacostia. I marched in the Anacostia band, and I said that shit for three years straight, and I really did not know the meaning of what the hell I was saying. And it was that they were spelling us to even say it wrong, because it's not Anacostia, it's Nakastock. Now, if you're looking at this map, for all my people that are not tuned in, hello, listeners, on Cruddy Right Radio. For all my YouTube viewers, if you're looking at this map, to the right, in big, dark, bold letters, you see the word Nanticoke and Akamak. That's Merlin, y'all. That is what they, are, what they call Merlin. It actually wasn't Maryland at that time. As you can see, you don't see a D.C., a Maryland, or a Virginia. You see what? I see nations. You know those things that they say wasn't really in this part of the region, except for uh, Pocahontas people, and, and, and you might hear some references to the Piscataway. And in the middle of this map, do you see P-A-T-A? W O M E C. Do you know what that eventually turned into? The Potomac. <laughs> the Potomac. And for all my Virginians, do you see P O R T O B A C C O? Poor tobacco. Poor tobacco. Tobacco. Virginia. Hey, how you doing? Hmm, sounds fishy, doesn't it? Then you have man's cunt under that. Wakoka Miko to the right of it. <laughs> Everyone knows about the Rappahannock and the Tappahannock, you know. Let's go back up to this Nakastank because that's where we are today, the Nakastank. They will tell you that the Nakastank was just a little small tribe on the southeast side of current present day Washington DC which is not true because to say that you have to know how big the Anacostia was now you see 
you do not see on this particular map in the region of Washington, D.C., which would be that triangle where that water is and the split in the river and all that, which is the Potomac River, Nakastank was big as shit. And had most of that area to themselves. To themselves. So I'm going to go ahead and break down um, a little information for y'all today on how how it came to be that the Nakastank lost their land. <laughs> well, we can go right here. Yeah. This is titled uh, Before the Federal City and Capitol Hill. It's talking about the first residents of the Nakastank. The earliest known inhabitants of Capitol Hill were the Algonquian speaking Nakastank. The people, the name of the tribe, also the name of the principal village, is believed to mean trading village. The Indians were active in this area because of its proximity to the Eastern Branch, a key source of food, transportation, and communication. With increased land and water trade networks connecting groups of American Indians by 500 BC, the Nakastank became associated with the Piscataway, whose chief resided over all the area tribes to the north of the Potomac River, and the Doog who were located on the Virginia bank of the Potomac River. Centuries later, in June 1608, now you see how it went from 500 B.C. to 1608? That's a big-ass gap. That is, a, that is over 1,000 years. 1,600 years. 1,100 years. That's 1,100 years. And it goes to Captain John Smith. <laughs> reported visiting a Nakastank village on the eastern bank of the river opposite a future site of Capitol Hill. Ultimately, as the colonists arrived, the Nakastank relocated and are believed to have merged later with the Pisca Piscataway. <clears throat> okay. So, it's not telling you why they left and how they left. It's just telling you that eventually... They got the fuck out of there when the colonists started arriving in the area of the Potomac where the Nakastank villages were, which were plantations, okay? I have pictures of the Anacostia banks that look like plantations. And when I say plantations, I'm not talking about, oh, massa, we going to pick this cotton. Plantations were village gardens, okay? So this map right here, if you look, it shows you the Chesapeake Bay, or they're calling it the Peak Bay, yeah, Peck Bay. And if you look where the, yeah, I'm looking for the Nakastank on here. Let me make this a little bigger. This map is a map that John Smith put together <laughs> yeah they should be and it don't even show them up here that's the cutter woman right there Katata woman it should be up a little further must be another part of this map I must be. yeah yeah we've seen several maps where they don't show you the Nakastank on the map. Okay, let's go ahead. Moving on. <coughs> Lord Baltimore and the land grants in 1632 to 1790. By 1632, the land that was to become Capitol Hill and the larger Washington, D.C. was located within a royal charter granted by King Charles I to George Calvert, Lord Baltimore. For those that don't know, you need to go and look up the etymology of the word Lord. Because everybody will always, oh, Lord, my Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord means landowner. Landlord. Lord of the land. Landowner. That's what it means. And his first heirs and successors. As the proprietors, the Lords Baltimore had the power to divide and dispose of the land. The earliest land grants on Capitol Hill 
were Duddington Manor, Duddington Pasteur, and New Troy, patented in 1664 by George Thompson. These grants totaled a 1,800-acre tra tract that was acquired from Thompson by Thomas Notley in 1670. In 1671, Notley united the three grants into one holding known as Cern Abbey Manor. The track included a large portion of the future city of the U.S. Capitol, said to roughly include the northeast and southeast sections from the boundary to the Anacostia River or the eastern branch, to the Potomac Southwest, to the Bureau of Engraving and Printing, 14th Street Southwest between C and D Street Southwest, and thence northwest to about 7th and K Streets. To the east was the Hoop Yard, a 500-acre tract granted to Walter Hoop in 1687, or Hope, but I'm thinking it's Hoop. The tract was enlarged by Hoop in 1688 with an additional 154 acres designated as Hoop's addition. The combined acreage set diagonally across the future site of Capitol Hill from about 8th Street Northeast to eastern to the eastern branch between 3rd and 10th Streets Northeast to 3rd Street and Kentucky Avenue Southeast. The land covering most of what would become Capitol Hill East was part of the Knock, a 500-acre parcel granted in 1686 to Walter Thompson. Also laid in northwest-southwest diagonal, the land abuted the hop yard from 8th Street to today's Barney Circle. Damn. Barney Circle is the circle by Pennsylvania Avenue Bridge, I believe. Um, the eastern border ran from 14th Street Northeast, southeastwardly, to the site of Congressional Cemetery. Yeah, Barney Circle. The land beyond the knock east to the eastern branch, including the future subdivision of Rosedale and Isherwood, was a 414-acre tract known as Chance, which was patented in 1734 by Thomas Evans. <laughs> this that land they was talking about right here. Y'all see this shit? Do y'all see Jamaica up there on this map? Top left? Y'all see that? Port Royal. Jamaica is right above it. Mm-hmm. Cern Abbey Manor is down at the bottom. The hop is to the right, the knock. All of this is right here by Pennsylvania Avenue Bridge, pretty much is this part that they talking about where we fucking sitting. Talking to y'all right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hops, uh, hoop, the the yeah the hoop yard yeah. Mm -hmm. It says this map, figure four, uh, Priscilla W. McNeil map shows tracts of land in Prince George's County, Maryland. That's what this was. Y'all see that? Prince George's County, Maryland, <laughs> covering y'all uh, convey. For the federal city and ownership of the land on June 28th and 29th, 1791, when the first trust deeds were signed, February, what? No, it's not. That's a comma. What do you mean they signed the trust deeds in 19? Wait a minute. <coughs> Hold on. This says that the first. The first trustees was signed February 1991. <laughs> this land was, they didn't own this shit, and they signed the trustees in 1991, y'all. Courtesy of History Washington Magazine, the Historical Society of Washington, D.C. is where this is coming from, just so you know. These lands were patented in anticipation of the need for fertile tobacco growing acreage as nearby farmlands became developed and generally not inhabited until after the turn of the 18th century. By the time it was chosen as a site of the new federal city, 
the area was a patchwork of agricultural development and decay. <laughs> okay, what they saying is after they got rid of the knocker stock on paper and there was nobody here to man the plantations that the knocker stock were uh, growing, that the shit fell to pieces because they couldn't fucking farm is what they're saying. The landscape showed the effects of forced changes in the fauna from a half a century of farming tobacco, corn, and other crops. The results were not very pretty, but time had already begun to heal parts of the exhausted land. By 1800, web-like patterns of clearings had grown <laughs> happily. I've never heard that word before. Have zardedly over the old fields and woods connecting a few clusters of buildings. <laughs> Pierre Charles Lafont, Peter, yeah. For your for you guys that don't know, Pierre means Peter. Charles Lafont, chosen by President Washington to design the federal city, when first shown the land, he would lay out as the nation's capital stated although the land is apparently level yet by gentle and gradual swellings a variety of elegant prospects are produced i want to pause right here for a second because um mm, or do i no let's go <laughs> all right y'all ready <clears throat> seated to the public on condition the original proprietors of Capitol Hill. The 10 square mile chosen for the District of Columbia extended beyond the, confl the confluence of the Potomac and Anacostia Rivers and included the colonial towns of Georgetown, Maryland, and Alexandria, Virginia. Y'all heard that? Georgetown, Maryland, okay. Virginia, as well as nearby plantations and farmland nearby as well as nearby they're not even telling you where it's at it's just telling you that it's nearby and they're gonna claim that shit okay within that 12 within that 10 mile square a smaller area was established as the federal city okay so what they're saying is you got 10 square miles and then within the 10 square miles is a smaller area was established as the federal city, city of Washington, and played it according to LaFont's plans. It was owned by 19 landowners who signed an agreement in 1791 to cede the public on condition portions of their land for the creation of a permanent government seat comprising about 6,000 acres. The land was to be laid out with streets, alleys, public reservations, and squares to be divided into buildable lots. The original proprietors would retain half of the lots on their former land, plus their own buildings, other improvements, and graveyards wherever possible. They would be compensated by the government only for land appropriated for public use exclusive of the needed for streets and alleys, the land was described as forest fields and low-lying land. Okay, so the this we are the people of the forest. We are them woodland people. So they said that DC was a low-lying land. We know that on either side of downtown, come up here. Yeah. They said the flat part, so that would mean the whole mall. Mm-hmm. The main building. Now hold on now, cause we're gonna get into the Seven Hills now. We ain't even got into the Seven Hills yet. You know what I'm saying? So it says, uh, the area that became Capitol Hill was owned by Daniel Curl of Duddington, William Prout, Abraham Young, William Young, and George Walker. The house of Charles Carroll of Carrollsburg, where the fuck we live at, the father of Daniel Curl was located on the bank of the Eastern Branch just south of the U.S. Capitol. 
And that's where we are right now. <laughs> Whew. William Prout's house was situated in the vicinity of 8th and M Street Southeast, north of Reservation 14. Reservation 14. There was a reservation? Where the Navy Yard was later placed. The Navy Yard was a fucking. This is the Navy Yard. Oh my God. Reservation 14. <clears throat> the Navy Yard was later placed. The home of William Young was located within the confines of what is now Congressional Cemetery. <laughs> His brother, Abraham Young, had a house located at the approximate intersection of 15th and D Street Northeast. The land of George Walker was improved by a dwelling set near Merlin Avenue and 6th Street Northeast. Many of these early landowners were also slaveholders. And their antebellum properties included log pens extending behind the mansion houses that ranged in the size of 10 by 14 to 16 by 20 feet. Trifling motherfuckers. Mm. I'm scrolling through. Y'all can see these for those that are on uh, YouTube watching. You can see these maps of Washington, D.C. Okay. You see that? Washington, D.C. in embryo. Mm. Okay. These men were persuaded to grant their land with the promise that the placement of the federal city in this region would increase the value of surrounding land they retained. This growth, however, would prove much slower than promised, and the venture would prove disastrous for many of the Capitol Hill proprietors. <laughs> the far northeasternmost corner of what is now Capitol Hill East, east of 15th Street and North C Street Northeast, was not included within the federal city boundary. Hold on. Was not included in the federal city boundary under the purview of Pierre Lafont. Rather, this land was part of Washington County. Fifteenth Street and C Street. Washington County. To its inclusion within the District of Columbia, the Maryland Tract was owned by Abraham Young. Benjamin Stoddard, talking about on the other side, the East Capitol and shit. Y'all know, y'all oh y'all started niggas up there off thirty seven. A prominent Georgetown merchant had contracted to purchase the property from Young, and like many of those original proprietors owning property near the Capitol building, expected to benefit from the subsequent development. This track in particular, which would be known as Rosedale and Isherwood in the later nineteenth century, was valuable because of the exceptionally abundant spring feeding the creek that ran through into the eastern branch. Wait, there's a creek over there by Rosedale? Mm, we'll talk about that too. Mm-hmm. When the nitro century vulnerable and was vulnerable valuable because of the exceptionally abundant spring feeding, the creek that ran through it into the eastern branch started to request that this parcel be exempted from the federal city plan was granted by President George Washington. So, okay, wait, I'm looking. I'm okay. 15 and Merlin Avenue is pretty much what he's talking about, right? So that meant that everything from Northeast back that way was Washington County and didn't have anything to do with the city. So, like, Hack and Jamal, you know, I'm back on the streets. Yes, so I'm like, oh, man. Nah, for this section right here. For for this section right here, they're talking about Rosedale and Isherwood is what they're talking about. And they're saying that that's, wa that's where Washington County starts. So that's what I'm saying. Not before it starts at Eastwood. There's nothing in Maryland. That's why you see the bridge being literally attached on the other side of that road. That part. All right, the Forsyth plans and the Font period. 
I want to skip through this a little bit. Yeah, I want to skip through this for a little bit. I want to go back a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. First, I want to see if her. Nah, fuck it. I'm just going to give y'all the raw. Give y'all the whole DC right now. A far-sighted plan in the font period. The present-day Capitol Hill neighborhood stretching from Jenkins Hill to Anacostia Flats, excluding the Cool Run Track located in part in today's Rosedale issue with neighborhoods, was an integral part of Pierre Charles Lafont's design for the city of Washington in 1791. The Baroque plan delineated, uh, yeah, delineated a capital city of magnificence worthy of international distinction and to be sure from Capitol Hill one can make out the liniments the wide avenues and spacious public areas of the ceremonial core the White House denoted as the President's House and the U.S. Capitol identified as Congress House or Federal House were the centerpieces of the plan each occupying large squares with associated public office buildings and landscape gardens. The president's house was to be located more in the wood and off the creek. To the east, the Capitol building was to be placed on Jenkins Hill, which the font characterized as a pedestal waiting for the superstructure. The prominent rising hill was roughly circular and with a relatively level plateau on top that extended to a high point at First Street. The landscapings to the east then formed a saddle-shaped, very softly rounded ridge. The capital was served as a focal point for the residential neighborhood known as Capitol Hill that would ultimately develop on its east side and extend to the eastern branch. I'm going to stop right there for a minute. Yeah, I know. I'm looking for something. I w- I'm looking for. Uh, mm-hmm. We talking about Capitol Hill. I'm looking for uh, the document that we just was reading that was telling us about who lived on Capitol Hill before they, you know, claimed this land, which I might have to bring to y'all tomorrow, but I can tell you right now who it was. It was the damn Nakastock. It was the Anacostians that they talk about. They said that this hill was where they all were chilling like shit on that hill that they said would be a great spot to put their capital on. See, they don't tell you who those inhabitants are. They're going to tell you with some slaves there. They're going to tell you that the Nakastock rolled out in the 1600s and all that shit. But that is not the case. It is truly not the case. We have been lied to. Now, back to this DMV thing. Let's get to uh, Rome Merlin. <laughs> Rome Merlin. So I, I briefly gave y'all a little rundown of the layout and the plans that they had for the city and who owned what parts of the city and all that great shit. So I had to um, go back even a little bit more because they're not really giving you a lot of detail and shit right here. So we're going to talk about the Tiber Creek, okay? It was originally called Goose Creek. Like, what the hell is Goose Creek? Or some of you might not even know what Tiber Creek is. Okay, so we'll give you the history. Originally called Goose Creek, it was renamed by settler Francis Pope. On Pope owned a 400-acre farmstead along the banks of the creek, which in a play of his surname, he named Rome after the Italian city, and he renamed the creek in honor of the river which flows through that city. Using the original Tiber Creek for commercial purposes was part of Pierre Charles Lafont's 1719 plan of the city intended for the permanent seat of the government of the United States. The idea was that the creek would be widened and channeled into a canal to the Potomac. By 1815, the western portion of the creek became part of Washington City Canal. 
running along what is now Constitution Avenue by the 1840s. However, because Washington had no separate storm drain and sewer system, the Washington City Canal had become a notorious open sewer when Alexander Boss Shepard joined the D.C. Board of Public Works in 1871. He and the board engaged in a massive albeit, albeit uneven series of infrastructure improvements including grading and paving streets, planting trees, installing sewers, and laying out parks. One of these projects was to enclose the Tiber Creek, Washington City Canal. <laughs> A German immigrant engineer named Adolf Kluss, also on the board, is credited with constructing a tunnel from Capitol Hill to the Potomac, wide enough for a bus to drive through to put Tiber Creek underground. So Tiber Creek is underground, y'all, and that's why y'all don't see it, because I was like, what you mean running along Constitution Avenue? I don't even remember nobody's or creeks or none of that shit running along Constitution Avenue. But it makes sense that it doesn't because they buried the motherfucker. It's underground. And so the city is on top of what was the city. Many of the buildings on the north side of Constitution Avenue apparently are built on top of the creek, including an IRS building, part of which is built on wooden piers sunk into the wet ground along the creek course. The low-lying topography that contributed to the flooding of the National Archives building in D.C., IRS and Ariel Rios buildings that forced their temporary closures beginning in late June 2006. In fact, until the mid-1900s, 1990s, that part of Washington around the intersection of 14th Street and Constitution Avenue was an open parking lot because the underground water was too difficult to deal with. During construction of the Ronald Reagan building, 1990 through 98, the engineers figured out how to divert the water, built that dewatering, but that dewatering then reduced the water level underneath the IRS building, which caused the wooden piers to lose stability and part of the IRS building foundation to sink. <laughs> A pub near Tiber Creek Historic Course north ca of Capitol Hill was named after it. The Bistro's Bis restaurant now occupies the Tiber Creek Pub's former location. A lockkeeper's house from the Washington branch of the Chesapeake and Ohio Canal remains at the southwestern corner of Constitution Avenue and 17th Streets, northwest near the former mouth of Tiber Creek and the western end of the Washington City Canal. Now, for those Washingtonians and people in the metropolitan area that know where 17th Street is, uh, Constitution and 17th Street that they talk about, this is the little house right across the street from the monument before you make that turn to go around the loop to go into the park. According to General James Wilkinson memoirs, I may be excused for mention another incident which deeply interested my family. My father, to preserve his health and property, purchased 500 acres of land lying on the Tiber and Potomac, which probably comprises the president's house, but at this time, about 1762, the present seat of the government was considered so remote from the early settlements of the province that my mother objected to removal on account of this distance and my father transferred the property to Thomas Johns Esquire, a friend of contempt of his neighborhood, to whose family it proved an auspicious contract. But in this case, the benefactor did not long enjoy the prosperity he had promoted. Today, the streams following flowing under the city is often referred to as Tiber Creek, though its common pass with the canal is acknowledged. So, um, yeah, the dude that owned what y'all call in Washington, D.C., the federal city, name was Francis Pope. <laughs> and he came over here and he copped the land from Mr. White. <laughs> that is really his damn name. <laughs> oh, man. 
what did they call him? The father, Apostle White. Came and got the land from Apostle White. He wasn't a pope. Yeah, Francis. Yeah. Francis Pope, that ain't a pope, came to get a parcel of land in Merlin. That's his name, yeah, he's a pope. Yeah, Mr. Pope. Mr. Pope came and came to see the Father White. Father White to get some land. To get some land. Here it is, right here. Yeah. Wow, this shit. And, you know, it's crazy because you guys can find this information out yourselves. And they're saying all of that <coughs> and and breaking down these streets and, and, and parts of the area and quadrants. I'm doing this because I want y'all to understand that this ain't fucking D.C. I just told you what it was. Rome, Merlin. And if you want to go back further than that, it ain't Rome, Merlin. Because Merlin is a part of Virginia. Boom, there I said it. Merlin came from Virginia in the 1600s. Mm. Yeah, and they fought over that shit, Merlin and Virginia. Specifically, two families fought over it. William Claiborne was fighting the Calverts. You know, Lord Baltimore, Calvert County. Yeah, all that Calvert shit. Yeah, so the Claibornes, William Claiborne, was fighting... The Calverts, who was taking the land by guns and force from the Claibornes, because he said that it was ceded to him by the king. <laughs> Whole time, none of them motherfuckers ain't on none of this shit, because this was the Narcostonk. So if you want to call it something, call it what it originally was the Narcostonk. Damn, where are those pictures at that I just sent over with the um the plantation at the Anacostia River? The picture we just saw with the the uh plantation at the Anacostia River and shit. Yeah. Wow. It's really eight o'clock. Yeah. Y'all see my smile? <laughs> so I know y'all like that. Where she at? She been reading like shit? Sometimes reading is very fundamental, and we have to do it because when we don't, we just go along with what people say, and then we had arguments over a motherfucker talking about the DMV and shit, stupid shit, when that shit ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Uh, we all know that the reason why people give all these titles and, and names to places it's because they want to belong to something. You know? They want to belong to something. For a long time, you had artists that came out of Merlin and got on. And they said they was from, no, they didn't. They said they was from D.C. They said they was from D.C. back in the day. Now, don't want to hear none of that D.C. shit. They going to say I'm from Merlin. Landover is the first thing you... They don't want you to they know they from Merlin. They, they gonna say they cousins hang out in they DC. Say sound, they wanna make themselves sound a little harder and say I'm in from DC. I'm from the DMV. They can't even say DC. And you know, a lot of people I s I've seen it's funny. I will accredit Twenty Bello to a hip hop phrasing of the DMV. Okay? He had a great idea where he wanted to bring people together from D.C., Merlin, and Virginia. Then it was, nah, not that part of Virginia. Nah, Virginia Beach, y'all can't be a part of this. Baltimore, y'all too fucking far north. So then it was, how can you call it the DMV when you are chopping out parts of states and shit? So is it local Merlin and Virginia in D.C.? Or is it all V because... All this shit came out of Virginia. 
and there was no Merlin or no DC, or the fact that <laughs> all this shit came from Nakastank territory, if you want to go even further into that shit. So your your Nakastank and your uh what was that? What was that uh Nord Nakastank what's that called? Map again? Yeah. The 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 Nanakoke. So uh, you even Nakastank, Nanakoke, Akamak or part of this Piedmont with all these tribes that's listed under there. And they go on and on and on. Yeah, go ahead. So, yeah, you even from, see where it says the Nanakoke? That's what y'all would call present day Merlin right there. That's Merlin Eastern Shore and all that shit. Chesapeake Bay. And that's the Anacostia right there. Anacostia. That right there is Nakastank. So, yeah, and so you're either makes sense and tomorrow we're going to get into indian head i'm going to do some research on indian head because if you look at maps today a lot of the maps still have those tribal names except for in this 10 square mile where you don't see any and you can't even count Anacostia Tribe because that's not the original name. That's the name the Spaniards gave this place. So, for all you people that want to scream DMV, and then you 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 scream DMV if your people been right here for at least a hundred years, okay? So you you ain't DMV. Your ass is Nanacoke. <laughs> You even Nanacoke, Nakastank, Piscataway, Wakanita, Hasanuga, Monahawk, Tijinanatano, Potawomac, Matakati, Katatawaman. Let me scroll down. You these people. Ain't no damn DMV. Pamunkey, Monacan, Sapani, Matapani, Chickahominy. Kaskakiak, Chesapeake, Powhatan, Kikotan, Pianica Content, Pianic, Piana Content. <laughs> uh, what is this one right here? Sekekawan, okay. Opokamoke, Rappahannock, Port Tobacco, Doak, you one of them. Yo ass ain't no fucking DMV. DMV is a title of some shit that a fucking corporation came up with. All right? Let me go back to me real quick. Yeah. So, you ain't none of that shit. You ain't no DMV. You ain't no DC, no Merlin, no Virginia, not none of that shit. You one of them nations. And it still goes back to, who are you? Where your people come from? What your grandmama is? You know? Don't get upset when people use modern day terms to describe this place and, and or try to rewrite modern history. <laughs> Don't get upset when people try to rewrite history from 10 years ago. They've been rewriting history way longer than that, as you can see. Because from 1600 to 2000, this shit done had a lot of names. And the people who were originally here ain't been represented. We've been whited out on paper. With the eraser light shit, the black line going through. And y'all helping them along. Know your hood and rep your plantation. Don't be ashamed to rep your plantation. I'm from the mother of stonk. My great-grandmother was born in Nakastank territory. Her mama, her mama was born under the Catawba and the Congaree nations. Okay? I don't know about no states or none of that shit. We got to stop thinking like them. We, we, are think, we are thinking with a colonist mind. No, 
No, no, no. I just showed you the maps of what this shit was. Ain't no DC murder in Virginia for real. That's those are companies. They've always been companies. So if you're so pressed to say you from one of these motherfucking companies when they ship out, ship your ass with them. Okay. All right, y'all. It's been great and real and all that great shit. And I love you dearly. Thank you. I want you guys to subscribe to the channel. Sc- subscribe to DC Title Monster, Lady Moe Beast. Follow us on Instagram, Credit Crankers, Lady Mo- Lady Moe Beast, DC Title Monster. I'm wrapping it up, B. I talked for an hour. You get an hour of power. And this was, like I said, our f- my first live Mohan report. report. Yeah. All right. So um, I don't know if they're going to censor my shit because I said a lot about where I love. But this is my land. And I am not going to stalk. <laughs> Straight like that. And I'm out.